The next question is to Congressman Taylor. The Taylor campaign has pointed out the 13th check issue. The Palazzo campaign mm -hmm. has brought up your voting record with Nancy Pelosi. How do you respectfully answer to that question? Sure. I brought tonight copies of a bill that uh, Stephen Palazzo introduced to raise the retirement age and to cut the 13th check for people who hired after July of 2010. Think about it. The guys, the newest policemen, the newest firemen, the newest teachers, the ones who make the least amount of money when they start out, his reward for them is to see to it that they're going to work longer and they have less compensa compensation than when they retire. Stephen, you got paid. You do collected 40 something thousand dollars for a part-time job in Jackson and you sat up there and figured out ways to cut the people who are the most productive, the people who were our heroes after Hurricane Katrina and that's the first responders, our policemen, our firemen, our teachers who in many instances did not have a home to go home to but went to work every day educating the people of South Mississippi and your thanks to them was to mess with their 13th check, the check that they count on for their Christmas bonus. You have two minutes. Oh, well, thank you, Kelly. Um, I'm glad you brought up the 13th check because there's one thing that I, I will never do, and I keep our promises to our seniors, our veterans, and our public employees. The public employment retirement system is $10 billion unfunded. My bill, if it would have passed, would have tied the cost of living adjustment to the consumer price index, as 80% of all federal and state benefits are tied to the CPI. It's $10 billion underfunded. I'm trying to save jobs in a tough economy. I'm trying to protect our teachers' jobs, our firefighters, our policemen, and our municipal employees. My job is, is to make tough decisions, but it's also to protect the solvency of the public employee's retirement system so all retirees, those currently in the system and those benefiting from the retirement, will have money available to them when they need it. Now, I pulled this bill from consideration. It was never voted on. The bill was drafted without leaving the proper language. It was supposed to have a grandfather clause in for those currently in the system and those who are actually drawing retirement. It did not have that. We were just going to have it apply to new hires only um, because the system as it's set up could possibly be insolvent in the future. And it's my job to stabilize it and shore it up so our public employees will have the income that they were promised and the income that they paid into it over their lifetime of service to our state. And I appreciate their service. I, many of my friends are firefighters and policemen. And my mother, my grandmother, and my sister were all public teachers. Thank you so Thank much. You. you have 30 seconds for rebuttal. Steven, you probably forgot that I used to be a state senator. The bill is not drafted and introduced until you give final approval. That's your name up there, Palazzo. That's your name up here, Palazzo. The fact that this bill even exists means you went to someone in the drafting office and you said, this is my idea, we're going to cut their check in the future. We're going to see to it that even if there's 6 or 7 or 8 percent inflation, they'll only get 2.5 percent increase on their COLA. That's not the system now. Stephen, if, if you're proud of I'm what sorry, you did, own up to it. Seconds, but don't lie seconds. to me. Don't we lie had a to the people. 30 second rebuttal. You both Fair agreed to the guys. rules. We're going to go with the 30 seconds. You, get, you each get two minutes on the questions and a 30 second rebuttal, and I've got to hold you to that. All right. This question goes to Mr. Palazzo first. What are your plans for insurance relief for homeowners in South Mississippi? Well, you know, again, being a South Mississippian, my family's been here for more than five generations. My family, of course, I'm only 40 years old. I did not live through Camille, but my family did. My, but we did. We were here before Katrina. We were here during Katrina, and we were here after Katrina. Um, we, we've assisted in the rebuilding and, the re, you know, getting our lives back on track. Um, and, but the one thing is there's still lingering um, scars from Katrina, and that's the unavailability and the high cost of insurance for property owners. Um, you know, my, the congressman sitting to the next to me, he's had 21 years to build friendships and coalitions to get this bill passed. He voted for Nancy Pelosi, a vote that many South Mississippians would not want him to cast as a return, a promise for this bill. Five years after Katrina, there's still no bill. My, I think we could, go, we could copy. After 9-11, there was a Terrorism Risk Act basically it made an insurance available and it was done through a private public hybrid solution. It works, it, it gained bipartisan support all across the nation, it passed. 
Um, you know, we, we got to start thinking out of the box. We got to come up with common sense solutions. His bill, there was no appetite for it in the U.S. Congress. There will probably be no appetite for it in the future. Both Democrats and Republicans oppose it. It's time to stop preying on the fears of coast residents who've lost everything and start finding solutions to the problems. So I do think if we could work with our Gulf states delegations, we could work with others and come up with a common sense solution based on a private public model that will address this and we will see decrease in costs and more availability of insurance on the coast. Thank you so much. You get two minutes. Let me ask the question one more time. What are your plans for insurance relief for homeowners in South Mississippi? I'm absolutely amazed that Stephen Flazzo would refer to this as fears. When I was out passing out MREs after Hurricane Katrina and encountering the first responders and the question was always, how'd you do? Well, I lost my house, but I went to work. The first tragedy was the storm. The second tragedy was man-made. That's when the insurance industry systematically denied the claims of South Mississippians, legitimate claims that deprived them of the money to rebuild their homes and stuck the bill to the federal government at the same time. The reason Uncle Sam had to buy 42,000 FEMA trailers to help South Mississippians have a place to stay is because the insurance industry denied the legitimate claims on people's wind insurance. The insurance industry that year had $45 billion in profits as they told mom and dad, teachers and coaches, the President of the United States Senate, a federal judge, we're not going to pay your claim. That's wrong, Stephen, and you're siding with those guys and you're taking money from them. I've introduced a bill that says if you build your house the way you're supposed to and you pay your premiums, it doesn't matter if the wind destroyed your house or the water destroyed your house, you don't have to stay behind with a video camera you're gonna get paid. You don't have to hire a lawyer, you don't have to hire an engineer, you don't have to wait years, and you don't have to go begging and pleading to the very people who are back in Stephen Palazzo's campaign for the check that you were entitled to in the first place. Yes, it did pass the House first by 270 votes. It failed in the Senate. Steve keeps forgetting to mention that. But I will stay after this until it becomes the law of the land because the biggest hindrance to the recovery of South Mississippi is the lack of affordable wind insurance I'm siding with the homeowners. Stephen is clearly siding with the insurance industry that denied your claim and made $45 billion in profits that year. Thank you so much, Congressman. You get 30 seconds for rebuttal. Well, um, thank you. And, and again, as a congressman, you know, uh, he's constantly pointing the finger at everybody but himself. And we appreciate the bill, but the bill's not going to pass in its current form. And no one sought common sense solutions to find true reform because we're still suffering on the Gulf Coast. We've been hit. With, with, you know, the Katrina, the oil spill, the recession, we're suffering down here. And, you know, I'm glad you brought up, you know, the people who've contributed to my campaign because more than 90% of my contributions have been from individuals in I'm Mississippi. I'm sorry. Time's up so, on that one. I'm going to hold y'all to that. We agreed to the two-minute question, 30-second rebuttal. Um, we're going to take a break. I want to let everybody know you can watch the debate again Saturday at 3 and Election Day right here on WKFK TV 7, Tuesday at 10. You can also hear it again on News Radio 104.9 FM, 7 Monday morning and 6 Monday night. So maybe you came in in the middle of things and you'd like to start at the very beginning, you'll definitely get the opportunity to do so. You are watching the only debate between incumbent Congressman Gene Taylor and his Republican challenger Stephen Palazzo live on WKFK TV Channel 7 and listening on News Radio 104.9 FM.